Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss basicity of nitrogen compounds. So we have three nitrogen compounds that we want to compare. One of these compounds is interesting, imidazole, because we don't explicitly learn this in A-level chem syllabus. The other two functional groups, actually it is in syllabus. The other two nitrogen compounds that we want to compare, the basicity will be phenylamine and amide. So let's take a look at this exercise. Alright, so the question is here, the amino acid histidine has a cyclic imidazole side chain. So this will be the functional group that we are looking at. The table below compares the pKb value of N1 nitrogen atom of imidazole ring with the pKb values of ethane amine and phenylamine. So this is the information given our imidazole. The structure looks something like this. It is a cyclic compound two nitrogen, but you notice for this question, they only label one of this nitrogen, we label this as N1. PKB value for this N1, it is 8.8. .8. Then ethane amide, which is something that we should be familiar with, amide functional group, PKB value it is 14.5. Phenylamine, another functional group that we are familiar with, PKB value it is 9.4. So using the data provided, list the three compounds in increasing basicity, and we want to explain their relative basicity. Now comparing basicity, I think it is straightforward because we can just make use of this idea. Increasing basicity, if a base is more basic, or if I have a stronger base, then it should be able to dissociate in solution to give me more OH-. minus. So therefore the KB value will increase. So a stronger base will have a bigger KB value. So corresponding PKB value will be lower. So if I want to rank the three compounds in order of increasing basicity, that means the least basic to the most basic, the one with the biggest pKb value will be the least basic, and then the one with the smallest pKb value will be the most basic. That's why in terms of ranking, it is pretty straightforward. Our amide functional group has the biggest pKb value, so therefore this will be the first compound that we will be listing down. And then the next compound that we will list down will be our phenylamine, pKb value will be 9.4. And then finally for imidazole, this pKb value it is 8.8. .8. So therefore this will be the last compound to list down because this nitrogen will be the most basic. So the trend we have this here, our amide functional group will be the first guy, followed by phenylamine, which is the second guy, and this imidazole will be the most basic out of this list. Now, of course, listing them down is not particularly difficult because the pKb values are given, right? So we can just rank them based on the pKb values. The next thing that we want to discuss is how come amides, the basicity, it is the lowest, followed by phenylamine, followed by imidazole. Now, in syllabus, we actually say that amides are neutral. That means in syllabus, we say that the lone pair on nitrogen has no tendency to be donated. So that's why amides are neutral. Now, why are amides neutral? Even though it looks like there's a lone pair on nitrogen, right? The reason why amides are neutral is because this lone pair actually doesn't stay on nitrogen. It is delocalized extensively between this electronegative nitrogen and this electronegative oxygen. That means the lone pair actually can be spread out between nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So therefore, if it is distributed evenly between these three atoms, it is not available for donation. So amides will not use the lone pair on nitrogen for donation. So therefore, it is neutral. Now what we can also show, it is the resonance structure. And we can show that using arrow pushing, this lone pair will actually move away from nitrogen and then it goes to oxygen. So let me show you what I mean. What we can do is I can draw the arrow pushing from lone pair to the CN bond. So later I'll form a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And then what happens is the carbon-oxygen pi bond will open and both electrons would go to oxygen. Now what will happen next? Let us draw the consequence. CH3 obviously stays the same. Now what I have is the lone pair on nitrogen will form a pi bond with carbon. So instead of a single bond, I'll end up with a double bond. So now I have a NH2. So what happens to this nitrogen is, because it is giving the lone pair to carbon, it will become positively charged. So this N will now become a N+. And what happens next is, if I consider this 
pi bond between carbon and oxygen. If it opens up both electrons go to oxygen, the pi bond will break. Now it becomes a single bond, and then I end up with an oxygen. And because this oxygen gains the electron, it will become negatively charged. So it will be something like this. So you notice what happens is the pair of electrons, initially it is on nitrogen as a lone pair. And then where does it go in this structure? Actually, now it is here. It is being ultimately transferred from nitrogen to carbon and then to oxygen. So therefore, the negative charge is now on oxygen. Of course, the negative charge don't stay on oxygen. It can actually come back down to nitrogen. So what we can do is we can draw back the lone pair on oxygen, form back this double bond. And then once I form back this double bond, you go back to this guy. And what happens is the pi bond will open up between carbon and nitrogen. Both electrons, same thing, go back to nitrogen. And we will form back this lone pair here. So these two are resonance structures of each other. When we follow this arrow pushing and it goes back to the structure on the left hand side, we draw a double headed arrow to show that these are resonance structures of each other. So drawing resonance structures is one way to visualize the delocalization of pi electrons. So at the beginning on the structure on the left hand side, we say that the lone pair it is on nitrogen. Then if I look at the resonance structure on the right hand side, actually the lone pair is here on oxygen. So where is the actual position of the lone pair? Is it on nitrogen or is it on oxygen? Actually, it is somewhere in between. It can be distributed between nitrogen, carbon and oxygen. It can go up to oxygen and then it can come back down. So if I want to draw the overall resonance form of my amine, which is usually not common, but let us try to visualize this. So I have a carbon oxygen, sigma bond, and a carbon nitrogen sigma bond. So what we are saying is this lone pair is delocalized extensively between oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. So the delocalization will be from oxygen to carbon to nitrogen. Usually we say this as the lone pair on nitrogen, it is delocalized extensively between electronegative nitrogen and oxygen. So therefore, the lone pair is not available for donation. That's why amides are considered neutral in 11 chem syllabus. Okay, next for phenylamine. Now phenylamine, we know that it is more basic than amides because it can function as a base. But compared to other bases in syllabus like ammonia and amine, phenylamine will be less basic. So why is this the case? This is fairly straightforward because the lone pair on nitrogen actually can be delocalized or interact with the benzene ring or the delocalized pi system of benzene. So because of that, the lone pair becomes less available for donation. So one way to visualize this is I draw the six carbon in benzene here. Then this will be the benzene ring or the delocalized pi system. Nitrogen has this lone pair. Then what happens is there will be some interaction between the lone pair and the delocalized pi system. The consequence would be the delocalization in benzene. Originally, the six pi electrons are delocalized and swimming around benzene. Now, when nitrogen donates a lone pair to the delocalized pi system, it is as if it is contributing two more electrons. So now I have eight electrons swimming around benzene. And then in addition to around benzene, the delocalized pi system can be extended to the CN bond. So now the delocalization is extended to the CN bond. So my delocalized electrons can now swim around benzene, come out to nitrogen and then go back into benzene. So because the nitrogen has to use the lone pair to interact with benzene, the consequence is this lone pair is less available for donation. So the four phenylamine is less basic than ammonia. Now finally, imidazole. Now this guy is interesting because we haven't encountered this before in syllabus, right? We actually have two nitrogen, but the question only mentioned this nitrogen position one can donate lone pair. I have another nitrogen here, but it actually doesn't really mention the basicity of the nitrogen. So what we will assume is this nitrogen, it is neutral, and we want to explain how come this nitrogen, it looks like it has a lone pair. How come it doesn't donate the lone pair? We will talk about it subsequently, but we want to rationalize the position of the lone pair and in terms of lone pair availability whether each of these nitrogen can donate lone pair and of course it will be linked to the basicity now in order for us to visualize this maybe what we try to do is we try to draw out the atoms in detail 
and we only show the sigma bond first. Later, we will try to fill in the pi bond and the lone pair. All right, so basically, I have this same structure here. What I've done is I've only shown the sigma bonds. So my n position one will be here. And then this is my carbon two. This is my carbon two with a hydrogen. This will be my carbon three with a hydrogen. So this CH bond will be here. This is a nitrogen with a hydrogen. So this NH bond will be here, position four. And then finally, position five will be my carbon with another hydrogen. So this will be carbon position five. So as mentioned, what we have only drawn, it is the sigma bond. The next thing we want to fill up will be the pi bond and the lone pair. Now let's look at the pi bond first. The first pi bond, obviously, it is between carbons 2 and 3. So between carbon 2 and 3, I actually have a pi bond. So let me just draw the pi bond here. So this will be the first pi bond. And let me label this here. This is my pi bond between carbons 2 and 3. So just like what we have here. The next pi bond will be between nitrogen 1 and carbon position 5. So this is nitrogen 1 and then this is carbon position 5, right? So I have another pi bond here. So let me try to highlight this and try to imagine I have another pi bond here. This is my second pi bond. Okay, so far so good. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to put in the lone pair on nitrogen. Now nitrogen position 1 how many lone pairs would it have? Because it already forms one sigma bond, which is here, another sigma bond, which is here, a pi bond, which is here. So therefore, this nitrogen already used up three of its five electrons. So in this case, we know that this nitrogen should have one lone pair. Now, the position of the lone pair is important because if I consider the state of hybridization of this nitrogen one, because this nitrogen has one sigma bond, two sigma bond, and one lone pair, the state of hybridization of this nitrogen is actually a sp2. So sp2 nitrogen, the shape should be trigonal planar. So if I have a lone pair, the position of the lone pair should be pointing away from the two other sigma bonds so that the overall shape, including the lone pair, looks like trigonal planar. So let me squeeze in the lone pair here. I have this lone pair on nitrogen. And when I combine this lone pair and the other two sigma bonds with carbon, the overall shape should be trigonal planar because the state of hybridization of nitrogen for nitrogen 1 will be sp2 hybridized. All right, how about the other nitrogen? This nitrogen is something that we find it more familiar, right? Because it looks like a secondary amine bonded to one carbon, bonded to another carbon, and a hydrogen. So we know that this nitrogen has three sigma bonds. And by right, you should have one lone pair. And if it has three sigma bond and one lone pair, the state of hybridization of this nitrogen should be a sp3 nitrogen. sp3 nitrogen, the basic shape should be tetrahedral. So I know that you will have one lone pair. By right, the bond angle should be 109.5. But later, something interesting will come in. We will talk about it in a while. So let me just put in the lone pair somewhere here. So the lone pair on my nitrogen position 4 should be here. And again, the hybridization for this nitrogen by right, it should be a sp3 hybridized nitrogen. Okay, once we have put in the pi bond and the lone pair, the next thing we want to explain is how come N1 can act as a base, but N position 4, it doesn't function as a base. We want to explain that. Now, the reason why a nitrogen compound can function as a base is because of the availability of lone pair for donation, right? So this one, we have learned this. We know that the more available the lone pair for donation on nitrogen, then it functions as a better base. So conversely, if we look back at this compound, imidazole, and if you're given two nitrogen, nitrogen one, they mentioned that it can function as a base. So therefore, the lone pair must be available for donation. In fact, it is more basic than phenylamine, and in this exercise, it is the most basic nitrogen compound that we have. So what we want to move towards is, we want to explain how come this lone pair on nitrogen one is available for donation. But what is more interesting is nitrogen position four, because it looks like it also has a lone pair, but the question never mentioned the lone pair availability of this nitrogen, which suggests that Actually, this lone pair on nitrogen position 4 is not available for donation. That's why we totally ignore this nitrogen on position 4. Now, why is this the case? 
what you notice is I have a pi bond between carbons 2 and 3. I have another pi bond between nitrogen and carbon position 5. And this pi bond between carbons 2 and 3 and the other pi bond between nitrogen 1 and carbon position 5, they are next to each other. So what this means is I can have a delocalization of pi electrons between these two pi bonds because they're just next to each other, right? So I'll have this delocalization of pi electrons somewhere here. Now, if I consider this lone pair, what this lone pair can do is this lone pair can also contribute or take part in this delocalization in this cyclic compound. So therefore, this lone pair is actually involved in the delocalization and it becomes not available for donation. So if this lone pair can interact with this pi bond and it can also interact with the other pi bond, again, because they are just side by side. So let me try to draw the delocalization here. If somehow this pi bond can interact with the other two pi bonds, you notice this one forms a closed loop or a ring configuration. So therefore, what this means is I'll have a delocalized pi system where I have a certain number of electrons swimming around this cyclic structure. So how many delocalized electrons I have inside this system? I have two electrons from the first pi bond. I have another two electrons from the second pi bond. I have another two electrons from the lone pair. So all together, the total number of electrons inside this delocalized pi system, it is six delocalized electrons. Do you notice that it is exactly the same as the number of delocalized electrons in benzene? So what this means is this delocalization is as extensive as the delocalized pi system in benzene. In benzene, we say that because I have six electrons swimming around benzene, because of the delocalized pi system, benzene is considered as an aromatic compound stabilized by resonance. So similarly, imidazole, because it also has six delocalized electrons around this cyclostructure, so it is also considered as an aromatic compound so it is also stabilized by resonance. So if we know that this imidazole is stabilized by resonance, we know that the lone pair on nitrogen 4 will rather be delocalized into this pi system so that this entire compound can be stabilized by resonance. So it will not use this lone pair for donation. So that will explain why nitrogen position 4, it is neutral. All right, so here we have this comparison between the basicity of both nitrogen on imidazole. As mentioned, this lone pair on nitrogen position 4, it is involved in delocalization of pi electrons around imidazole. So therefore, this compound, it is aromatic and it is stabilized by resonance. So because the lone pair, it is delocalized, it is not available for donation. So therefore, nitrogen position 4, it is neutral. And that's the reason why when we look back at the question, they never mention anything about the basicity of nitrogen position 4 because it is doing something else, right? It is involved in the delocalized pi system. Now, how about this nitrogen position 1? Because we haven't answered how come this nitrogen position 1 it is more basic than phenylamine. It is because of the state of hybridization of nitrogen position 1 because it is sp2 nitrogen. So basic shape with respect to this nitrogen will be trigonal planar. So this lone pair naturally will be pointing away from this cyclostructure. So if it is pointing away from the cyclostructure, then it is not possible for this lone pair to make a U-turn and then turn back and interact with the delocalized pi system. It cannot do that. So because it is pointing away from the cyclostructure and therefore it is pointing away from this delocalized ring, so there's no interaction with the delocalized pi system, it is available for donation. In fact, if I compare the basicity of this guy with phenylamine, because phenylamine, the lone pair on nitrogen need to interact with benzene ring, right? So therefore it is less available for donation, it is less basic. This lone pair, by virtue of its position, pointing away from this delocalized ring, so there's no way for this guy to interact with this delocalized ring, so it will be more available for donation, which will make it a stronger base than phenylamine. All right, so that was the discussion comparing the basicity of imidazole, phenylamine, and amides. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.